With the presidential vote less than seven months away, President Biden was on the campaign trail in Virginia for an Earth Day event. Meanwhile, Donald Trump spent the day inside a Manhattan courtroom. The former president's legal woes are helping to shape a campaign unlike anything we've seen before. Joining us now from Wilmington, Delaware, is Michael Tyler. He's the communications director for the Biden campaign. Michael, thank you very much for being here. Good to see you. Um, so how is the Biden campaign assessing all of this? What's the strategy when it comes to this trial? Well, listen, as it relates to Donald Trump's trial, that's uh, those are questions that he and his legal team are going to have to answer. What this campaign and this president are going to be focused on in the meantime is communicating directly with the voters who are going to decide this election. Uh, that's what you saw last week when the president spent three days campaigning through uh, Pennsylvania and Scranton, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And it's what you'll see to, uh, today, of course, on Earth Day in Virginia and uh, again tomorrow when he goes down to Florida to campaign on an issue that is going to be fundamental to this election, uh, which is whether or not women are going to have the fundamental rights uh, to make their own decisions for their bodies. I think we think that stands in stark contrast to Donald Trump, uh, who's a candidate who, uh, when he is out on the stump, is uh, proudly bragging about the role that he played in overturning Roe and is saying uh, that the extreme bans that we're seeing in states like Florida in Arizona are the right thing to do. Um, we think that's wrong, uh, and we're going to campaign on that from now through Election Day. Yeah, I want to ask a little bit more about that. Uh, as you say, I mean, the Biden administration off announced new rules that are offering, you know, more robust legal protections for patients seeking abortions and for health care workers providing them. And, of course, Biden's also expected to go to Florida uh, tomorrow to discuss the issue. But I'm curious, do you think that this issue puts any state in play that otherwise may not have been competitive? Well, listen, we think this issue is going to be fundamental uh, to this election across the country. Uh, and we think, as you know, you mentioned the president going to Florida tomorrow to campaign on this issue. Uh, we've talked about Florida being in play in recent weeks. Uh, that's why the president is going there. That's why we got staff on the ground. It's why uh, we're running ads in states like Florida. It's also true in states that we've been talking about since the start of this campaign, like Arizona, uh, where you have a ballot initiative uh, in the state and where the, cam the campaign is already aggressively working to turn out the vote and make sure that voters understand uh, that this election is going to be a choice between President Biden and Kamala Harris, who are fighting every single day to restore the protections of Roe, to make sure that women can make their own fundamental decisions about their bodies. And again, Donald Trump, a man who is bragging about his role that he played in overturning Roe v. Wade, who appointed the justices uh, who overturned Roe v. Wade, and again, who uh, said women should be punished uh, for receiving abortion care. So, uh, yes, it's going to matter in states like Florida and states like Arizona, but frankly, it's going to matter in every single state across this country, because if Donald Trump returns to power, he's made it very clear that he's going to do whatever he can to ban abortion across the country with or without Congress. So if you're in a blue state, a red state, a purple state, uh, this issue is going to be on the ballot. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether these ballot measures drive voters uh, at the top of the ticket as well. Um, switching gears a little bit, I mean, today is Earth Day. The president uh, announced several new climate actions. But what's really interesting is that in our CBS News poll that's out today, 50 percent of respondents said that they either have not read or heard much uh, about not much or nothing at all about what the administration has been doing to reduce climate change. So why this disconnect? I mean, what went wrong here? Well, listen, this is exactly what a campaign is for. It's about us relentlessly telling our message of what this president has accomplished and what he intends to do with another four years in office. And so we're taking opportunities like today on Earth Day, but every day on the stump, you'll see the, cam the, the president campaign on this, and you'll see it reflected in our paid advertisements, uh, that everything that this president has done to tackle what is an existential threat uh, to the United States of America and to the globe worldwide. Uh, that's why the president made the single largest investment in combating climate change through the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which not only takes on climate change, but makes sure that as we're building the economy for the future, uh, that's an American economy, American green jobs that, that is making sure that we tackle this, this problem. And so uh, this is going to be something that we relentlessly focus on and communicate to uh, the Biden-Harris coalition, young voters, progressive voters across the country, so they understand when they go to the ballot box, there's a choice between Joe Biden, uh, who made the single largest investment to tackle climate change, and a guy like Donald Trump, uh, who's making it clear that the only thing that he's going to do if he gets another term in office is give more tax breaks and handouts to big oil and gas execs. Yeah, I want to talk about young voters, because obviously they're critical to Biden's reelection. In our polling, we saw a significant dip, I mean, among young voters. Biden's approval rating had dropped 12 points since February. 
according to our polling. And his approval among these voters also dipped when it comes to his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. So can Biden win with those numbers? Well, look, absolutely, because we're going to continue to campaign relentlessly to reach young voters. Young voters were a key element of the Biden-Harris coalition in 2020. They're going to, they were a key component for uh, Democratic successes in the midterms, when uh, Democrats had the most successful midterm cycle uh, for an incumbent president since FDR. They're going to be critical uh, to our work in 2024. So uh, we're going to make clear everything that this president has done for young folks, uh, from climate, as we talked about, to the work that we've done to uh, uh, tackle uh, the student debt crisis in this country for giving <laughs> nearly $150 billion in student loan debt for over 4 million uh, borrowers in this country, uh, to the work that we're doing to make sure that women have uh, the fundamental right to make their own decisions. The whole slate of issues that we're uh, bringing to bear at the ballot box this November, uh, frankly, uh, nobody has more at stake than young people. And we're going to present the contrast and the choice and the vision of Joe Biden against Donald Trump. And we're very confident that if we do that relentlessly for the next six months, uh, that young folks are going to be with Joe Biden again this November. All right. Six months to go. We shall see. Michael Tyler, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.